Happy Sunday, Sooner fans. It's time to recap the Kent State versus Oklahoma game that happened Saturday night as Oklahoma won 33-3. Let's talk about it here in the morning after report. All that coming up in about 10 seconds. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, talking OU football, college football, and sports in general. And in this recap video, we're going to talk about OU versus Kent State. Saturday night, Oklahoma won the game 33-3. to We're going to talk about the first and second half, some of the things that I told you were going to come to fruition, and um, yeah, all that jazz. But while you're here, please hit the like and the subscribe button, as well as share. Why? Because sharing is caring. So, of course, we've got to talk about this OU Kent State game. And so Saturday was a really weird day. I don't know if you all noticed it. It was like a real weird aura in the air. It was very eerie. Uh, you noticed around the country there was a lot of upsets, a lot of crazy good games, but crazy at the same time from the Sun Belt upsetting most of the top 10 from Texas A&M losing to Appalachian State. You had Notre Dame losing to Marshall. You had Texas almost upsetting Alabama, which that was a really good game. We'll talk about that later this week. And all of this Sun Beltness and G5 giving the business to Power Fives, it made for the entire day to be a little bit on the weird side, right? And that continued on into the evening when Oklahoma faced Kent State. Now, I want to say this first and foremost. I need you Sooner fans to relax. Remember, the critical thing about this is we have a whole new regime. This is a whole new staff. These are new players. We did luck out that we got some people that are more familiar with each other. But there's still so many moving parts to an organization and a team that you can't expect them to be flawless at all times. And I say that because I've had a few friends and a few group chats that I'm in. Everybody freaked out the entire game. And this game was honestly one of Brent Venable's best case scenarios. And I say it like this. The defense was dominant against an offense that plays the exact same way as we do. Kent State is a high-tempo offense. So our defense was looking in the mirror. It didn't look like Oklahoma was shutting them down, but they held them to under 300 yards for the game. The quarterback didn't even throw for um, – he couldn't get himself over – what do he have? 131 yards passing in this game? 131 yards passing. The backup came in and threw an interception. They did run for 164, and that was mainly from the quarterback doing a lot of scrambling and getting out of the pocket because our defense was focused on the high-octane, up-tempo passes. But we kept them from doing anything big, and that is a huge win for Oklahoma. So when I did, earlier on Friday, I did my five things to keep an eye out for. I want you to go back and watch that video because a lot of that stuff came to fruition. Now, four of them was focused on the game itself. The fifth one was because of recruits coming in town. And a lot of those recruits were there. Haven't had a chance to validate that every single one showed. But I know I've seen some pictures with some buddies that were there at the game with some of the recruits that did go down. So that's a plus. But five things that I did mention that would we should pay attention to on this was one, the physical line, physicality on the line on offense and defensive side. Defensive side did their thing. They put pressure on the quarterback, forced him out of the ability to throw. Unfortunately, the linebackers weren't able to keep up with the quarterback initially. And then we were able to go out there and you know put the clamps and, and hit that man, keeping him from running as much as he was. But the defensive line did their thing. Now, the offensive line was kind of a struggle in the first half. Of course, we all know Oklahoma went basically the entire first uh, 58 minutes without a, without a score. We were down 3-0 to Kent State. Yes, I know everybody wants to be upset, freak out, lose your mind. There's no reason to. Things have to work at a certain pace. And you can tell that I kind of expected them to open the playbook a little bit more. They didn't. But I'll get into that on thing two. But the first thing was physical play. The line, they shifted around. Anton Harrison moved to the, to the right. You had Tyler Guyton on the left. And it just did not open up the holes we needed. The run game wasn't very effective. We had seven yards in the first half. Um, the 
passing game just wasn't as proficient. We kept punting. I think we had like four straight, you know, punts before we actually was able to get some momentum. But the defense held down. You know, this is the lowest point score that Oklahoma has held a team in the FBS since 2017. Since 17, we have not held a team to three points unless they're FCS. That's not a good thing. That tells you the defense was not very good. It either the players or the schemes, one of the two. I'm saying scheme, but we weren't good defensively. And I say that for this reason, because Kent State is expected to contend for the MAC Conference Championship. So they may actually be conference champions by the end of this season. They're, they're, they are one of those teams, and UTEP was considered a Conference USA uh, potential champion. So for us to be upset that these teams were able to kind of move the ball and play, nah, they got talent. That's usually where a lot of players end up whenever they are either getting trouble at uh, larger uh, P5s, if they don't end up in like JUCO or even lower. A lot of these kids end up in a lot of these G5 schools, and this is kind of where they rehab themselves. They're talented. They're just not the best, or they just can't stay out of trouble. Keep that in mind when you think about the teams that Oklahoma has chosen to play. We could have played some more cupcakes, some of the bottom of the barrel G5 teams. We didn't. We wanted competition. And Brevitable said it best. He said this was a challenge. This was adversity, and this was something that we needed as a team because that's where you grow. You grow with adversity and pressure. But let me preface with this. I get where everyone believes that Oklahoma should have went out there and just beat the brakes out of them. The spread was 33. We won by 30. Right there at the cuffs. Probably could have won by more. I think that uh, Braden Willis catch across the middle would have been probably a touchdown. But neither here nor there. Braden, it's okay. We'll get you there. But Oklahoma did play the brand of football that they wanted to play. Now, let's move into the next thing that was really big for me was the secondary and the, and the cheetah roll being busy. 131 yards passing in the game. That tells you that the, that the, that the secondary was busy. Cheetah roll was out there. Three sacks, 14 tackles, four loss. Stutzman was everywhere. That, to me, is a win. What do Sooner fans always complain about with Oklahoma? What do you all always complain over for the last five years? Defense, right? We had a defensive showing. Offense wasn't as potent. You may have questions for Levy, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But the defense was potent. They did their job. They allowed one score, and the missed field goal could have been two, but for the most part, they put enough pressure on them to where they could only get one score, and it was a field goal. I can't remember the last time that we didn't allow a team to score a touchdown. Honestly, I haven't even dug back yet. I'm going to when I do my five things for the Nebraska game and recaps later this week with others, but we we don't we we give up points. That's just how we work. And with this high up tempo offense, as I've talked about before, there's a chance that we were going to give up a lot of yards, give up a lot of points in the scrum of things. And the good thing is, is they locked down. The defense locked down, and so I'm proud of that. Let's talk about the offensive side now. I told you Dylan Gabriel and Marvin Mims were going to hook up a lot, and it was going to be big. They did it. Did y'all see Marvin Mims' numbers? Did y'all see what that man did in this game? So Dylan Gabriel got 296 yards. He did hit 300. Willis, I'm looking at you. That was that was 300. You had it. You were gone. That was a touchdown, but it's okay, bro. It happens to the best of us. So I don't blame you for it. I know that you're kicking yourself for it, but you did a fantastic job overall in the game, so keep that in mind. But 296, averaging 10 yards a pass, 10.6 yards, three touchdowns. Zero interceptions. 21 for 28. One of his better showings. Marvin Mims, what? Seven catches for 163 yards. Largest was 58, two tutties. Guys, I told you he was going to have his big game. This was his breakout game. And Venables mentioned it in the post game that you got to get the ball to your best players. And Mims was showing that he is that guy. Now, I'm hoping we get Jaleel Farouk more involved soon, which I expect. I don't expect them not to get him heavily involved in the future. We should see more of Farouk as we move into more conference play and playing against better schools. But as of right now, this is a moment to figure out what we want to do as a team, how we want to be dominant. So don't be upset that the team wasn't out there putting up 
seven, 70 points on them. They weren't giving up that many yards and the game was basically in control for the most part. That two minute drill was huge. Remember that. That's something that we're going to have to figure out how to do against real competition because there's going to be games where we're going to have to come down to the crunch. And it's, and it's sometimes these situations, to be honest, the way it looks to me, expect a lot of these OU games to be low scoring, 30 points or less. Expect it. I expect, I don't expect 40s and 50 point games, shootouts like we used to have. I really expect these games to stay in the 30s or less. Just because it seems like the way that this defense is being set up, they are here to impose their will and be dominant. Fourth thing that I talked about in my five things is the blitzing and sacks. Saw a little bit more, look, 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 to me it looked like they were scheming a little bit more and getting a lot more pressure on the quarterback. The only thing that sucks is that their quarterback at Kent State is pretty agile, got some moves, and he kept dipping up the sideline. So he was prepared. So having a spy would have been better but they didn't do that. Now, first half was brutal for a lot of us. I saw the palace wasn't very good, wasn't very rocking, I guess you could say, as the fans were there. But I did notice that once the sun went down, the new light show popped up and everybody started to really go, guess what happened? Oh boy, the offense got to churning. They got to churning. That two minute drill was basically when the sun was down. And... That heat probably was kicking a butt. It was, I mean, it was kicking a lot of people's butt across the country. I mean, that Texas-Alabama game, it was like 116 degrees on the field. It looked like it. Because they neither one of them could. They, they all looked like they just couldn't figure it out. Um, either it was just dominant defenses on both sides or just they just couldn't figure it out because it was tired and it was exhausted. But OU looked like that same thing. They, they couldn't get anything going in the first half, specifically during the sun. But once it got dark, oh, boy. 24 points in the third quarter. I told one of my group chats, I was like, relax, 35 points. Probably in the second half, should cover the spread. We missed it by three points. But Oklahoma is where they want to be. So keep that in mind when you watch these games. New regime, new staff, a lot of, of new players, a lot of moving parts. Everybody's figuring each other out. This is the first set of true competition because you're not practicing that hard because you don't want to injure your counterparts on the opposite side of the ball. You're practicing hard, but not that hard. And we're seeing, they're figuring out what's working, what's not. You saw the second half adjustments. That's something y'all felt like the other regime didn't do. We got that here. So be excited. Be hyped. You can be critical. There's nothing wrong being critical about some of the play calls with Levy or, or some of the, the, the way the offensive line was playing. Be critical. I have no issues with that. But keep in mind, new staff, new players, everybody's trying to figure this bad boy out. So be excited, Sooner fans. Go ahead and like the subscribe button. Please share because sharing is caring. Let other people know about the show and the, the channel. I'll have uh, a couple of videos talking about some of the recruits that were in town. So that was my fifth thing uh, with, a, with, a, with a buddy of mine that was actually there, um, the PG show. So are we going to plan to figure it out later this week? We'll talk about that. We'll recap this game. We'll also talk about Nebraska coming up, which that is going to be the test. Well, kind of. It seems like those boys have already quit on Scott Frost because, you know, he lost again. <laughs> so with that, we will chop it up with you all in a few days. Peace.